So today you are going to draw your adinkra symbols, chosen adinkra symbols onto your painting. So you, on the adinkra writing exercise, selected two to four adinkra symbols that meant something to you because you connected with them visually, what they look like, and because they, you connected with them in what they meant. So today you're going to go back to that website, look up those um, designs and transfer them onto your artwork. I'm using the same two symbols um, that I used on this one on this one. You do not have to put an adinkra symbol in every single section, but you do want to make it look balanced and ordered and purposeful in where you do put your adinkra symbols. So for me on this one, it was pretty obvious. I had two symbols in four sections. So I did two and two. Um, for you, it might, on this one, it's gonna be a little bit more complicated because there's less regularity. So for me, what I think I want to do is to use one of the symbols in the three mixed ones and the other symbol in the four surrounding ones. I think that's the way that's gonna make the most sense to my brain. And I also think I want the artwork to go this way as opposed to this way, but that's an artistic decision you get to make as well. So, To draw the symbols, mine on this one, this has two circles that sort of overlap each other. So I'm gonna start by sketching that and then find the lines, whereas this is a bit of a zigzag, but coming to similar edges with the boxes. So let's say I put the zigzag ones in these. So I'm gonna start by drawing in pencil and then I'm gonna go over it in Sharpie. It's gonna be a little bit difficult for you to see me drawing with the pencil, um, but I wanna show you that so that you can see how you're able to erase. So I'm gonna draw on the purple because I think you'll be a little bit better able to see it. So I start Now I went a little too far there. And a cool thing about acrylic is that I can just erase straight on top of it and it doesn't take up any of the paint. Okay, so I've got one of those done. Maybe you can see the pencil lines. But now I'm coming in with Sharpie. So the idea here is to be as true to the symbol as you can. I'm not asking for perfection, but I am asking for respect. Now I just did one line um, with the Sharpie. If I wanted to make them bolder, Come and sort of fill it in a little bit stronger. It's kind of a double thickness. Okay, and I would, I am choosing to put that one here and here and here as well. For drawing my other one, I'm going to start here and I have those two circles that overlap and I'm going to remove part of the circles in each one. But again, like we did when we were drawing from observation, look for the lines and shapes that you recognize. 
you know how to draw a straight line, you know how to draw a circle, and then adjust from there. So this one has these two pieces. I don't need to erase away that bit. And then this. These aren't my best circles, but I'm, I'm giving myself freedom to not be perfect on this one. Okay. If your Sharpie starts um, getting a little sketchy, come to the back and sort of like clean off the edges of it. And it'll come back nice and strong again. Oof. Again, not my best circle. I, I'm forgiving myself. If you have paint at home, black paint, and would like to try, and you have a, a small enough brush that you won't make yourself crazy, you could try painting these lines. But Sharpie is also an option. Okay. And I would continue adding the other two of this symbol in here and here until I had what looked like a finished piece. Here's an example of one that's finished. It feels balanced, it feels ordered, it feels full, um, and the symbols are represented in a bold and direct way. If you have questions, you can email me um, or you can ask on the day we return to class. We will have a catch-up day. Um, I'll see you tomorrow.